How do I even pronounce this? Armia Galant? I'm just gonna call it Destiny Dex. And to be fair, I ordered this under the impression that it was terrible. How bad is this game? Well, I wasted my free month of Gamefly playing Overwatch instead of the game I specifically ordered to make a review out of. Actually, I was getting the new D.Va skin, but the point is that this game is off-putting. Enemy's team health is low. We have captured a monolith. Our unit is under attack. 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 Our unit is our unit is under attack. Well, it's nice to see that where did you learn how to fly is still getting work. Okay, as you can see, this is some kind of Dota style card game where you summon monsters and then send them into battle. You win a match by capturing landmarks and defeating your opponent's forces, both of which slowly, and I do mean slowly, deplete your opponent's health bar. There are only two maps slash two modes in the game, which is incredibly underwhelming for a PS4 game. And here's my face if you tell me I need to play more to unlock other stages. One mode is capturing crystals, and the other mode is capturing points. Both seem to do the same amount of damage. The difference is crystals do it all at once, and points do it slowly over time. Now is it a bad sign when playing any card seems like a hassle? I mean, you use the D-pad to scroll through the cards, no problem there, but then you hit the square button and it doesn't cast the card, it only selects it. You have to then hit X to play it. Why? Why make me wait? Also, why is it two different buttons? I could get used to hitting square twice really fast, but X is also the targeting. It just kind of messes with my signals. Speaking of which, selecting monsters once you play them on the field is also a pain. This time you hold down the R1 and hit one of the face or D-pad buttons. That selects the monsters that's hotkeyed to it. And then you hit X again to move that monster. Or you can hit triangle to move all your monsters at once. Yeah, I've never found myself moving all my monsters to a single point on the map by rage-inducing accident. How could I with these flawless control schemes and clearly defined environments? I know it sounds like I'm doing a lot of bitching about pressing buttons, but there's an intuitive design that has evolved over the decades, and it's clear that this isn't it. Speaking of clear, I get that the darkness is meant to hide your enemies, but does it have to be so dark I can barely see what targets are? To the fight. I will praise it, the mini-map is a godsend. You can glean more information from it than you can the battlefield sometimes. Although it is the brightest thing on the screen. To the fight. And it won't help you with casting spells. As if the controls weren't fighting you, casting a simple fireball will take forever. By the time it actually shows up, the enemy has moved out of the way. I can never time it right. Son of a bitch! Did my monster just walk out of the healing? Can you believe nobody is playing this online? You thought the Battleborn wait time was bad. I literally forgot I was recording this. I only managed to find one game online, and I got wrecked. One, because I was green and didn't know capturing certain landmarks dealt damage, and sick- Oh, jeez Louise! Yeah, this guy had a totally OP'd Hydra that pushed my shit in, and the shit of every monster I threw at it. Yeah, that seems balanced. You can earn more cards as you level up, or you can buy more cards from the card merchant. If you've earned enough gold from the game, that is. You can get a regular booster pack for a thousand, or you can get a special booster pack for almost three times that amount. But it's guaranteed to have a more powerful card in it. It was about here where I was like, oh boy, here it comes. But I was surprised to discover that there was no pay-to-win option. No link to pay $20 for extra coins or anything. In an age of microtransactions, both outrageously sleazy or relatively harmless, it's refreshing to know that someone tried to make a self-contained game where you can actually get every card just by playing the game. Just by playing the... Oh... You can earn gold by winning games or finishing quests. But unlike most games where quests can stack up, here you can only choose one at a time. And freaking really? The first one I chose was playing 50 light cards. 
Yeah, sounds simple enough. But man, was this a struggle. The controls. The pacing. The game would really seem less of a schlog if health bars were just cut in half. And as far as I can tell, there is no way to get rid of the quest once you select it. You know, another thing other games get right. This would only be a major annoyance, but it became a game breaker when I accidentally chose to play against another player online. And that's the end of my story. Yeah, with my progression moving at a snail's pace, I uh, quickly lost interest. Played long enough to unlock the title character, this Firefox lady. She wasn't worth it. Sad part is, is I know a lot of work went into this. The artwork for the cards is great if you take the time to look at it. The modeling is decent. And if the hub wasn't this good, then I'm sure the controls would be even more insufferable. The game just needed some more polishing, paying attention to the mechanics and conventions that have been set forth by other games. And it would have been... In enjoyable. However, that wouldn't address the problem that this was released on the PS4 when games like this were already widely available on PC and mobile, and it seems that this was made specifically for the PS4 to try and draw that crowd away from their smartphones and back to console gaming. And here's a visual metaphor about how well that worked. Oh my god, I just now realized that the player with the giant three-headed dragon was named Kaiba. Turns out you can be the king of any game as long as nobody wants to play it.